And in business, Nigeria's economy, based on National Bureau of Statistics reports released earlier in the week, showed a year-on-year -year increase in GDP figures of 2.55% in real terms in the fourth quarter of 2019, from the 2.28% in the previous quarter. Now, the non-oil sector contributed 92.68%, while the oil sector contributed 7.32%. The service sector contributed the highest at 53.64%. Agriculture contributed 26.09%, while industries contributed 20.27%. Now, for more on the Nigerian economy, we are joined by Dr. Joshua Bamfo. He is the partner and head of transfer pricing at Anderson Tax. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Irene. Yes, certainly. Now, uh, when you take a look at the figures uh, at the point it was released, what was your thought on it? I mean, I think my, um, my thoughts were mixed. You know, in the short term, you look at the fact that we didn't start the year too great. Um, quarter one was around 2.1. Quarter two, actually, we grew at a lower rate, 1.94. So there was some skepticism. But quarter three went to 2.28. Quarter four went to 2.55. So you look at the trend, it's an upward trajectory, So which is some good news. So there's some form of excitement. And that's the reason why we saw a lot of headlines. But what, is, what matters most is to look at what are the drivers of that growth. So as you rightly said, you saw the service sector contributing around 53%. Yes. Um, the biggest um, growth came from the finance and insurance um, subsector, where because of um, CBN directive that banks should actually loan more, you know, they are loaned to, to, yeah, yeah, exa yeah, loan to deposit ratio of 60 and later on move to 65. 65%. That means banks were forced to actually play their role as financial intermediaries and make loans out to both individuals and businesses. Um, that re increases their returns, of, obviously. So that led to a growth rate of around 20% for quarter four, mm -hmm. if you look at that. The next is actually the information and communication sector. Mm -hmm. That has consistently um, performed well since the recession. They were averaging around 10%. You know, so that also helped. But what matters most is that if you look at the big three, what I call the big three, agriculture, trade, and manufacturing, that has traditionally been the backbone of our growth and creation of employment. They have not been doing that well. You know, so agriculture grew around 2.3%. Trade actually has contracted for the past three quarters. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you look at manufacturing, where you can actually employ people with diverse skills, yes. you know, manufacturing is also struggling, you know. So that is a, an area of concern. So if you look at yes, the trend, it's a good thing. We are back on an upper trend, 2.3, 2.55, and we can only hope that it continues to grow. So but if you look at the details, and the devil is in the details, then mm -hmm. there are some concerns. Now, finally, some of the things that people got excited about was that if you compare the annual growth rate, because this is MQ4, the annual growth rate for 2019, which um, ended up 2.27, and compare that to IMF's revised um, projection, which was revised from 2.3 to 2.1, as well as that of World Bank that was revised down to 2.0, mm -hmm. then it looks like we surpassed that revised you know, rates. But you then need to also compare where we thought we would be by now when we had a recession. Exactly. Remember, we came up with a medium term you know, plan, which is the econ economic recovery and growth BRGP. plan. BRGP. Exactly. We expect that around this time in the five year plan, we should be around 4%. 4%, exactly. So if we are down now making 2.27 as a year, then we really are uh, falling There's short and below. Concern. Exactly. So now it's a mixed result. Yeah, uh, concerning, you've, you've spoken well, but then concerning the new coronavirus situation, yeah. just yesterday, the 27th, yeah. the first coronavirus case was, you know, made mention of here in Nigeria. Yeah. Now, we know that before now, the World Bank has come up with its projected growth rate for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. The Nigerian government had also come up with its projections. The African Development Bank had done the same. Yeah. However, these were in isolation of a potential outbreak of coronavirus exactly. in Nigeria. So what are the possibilities of this affecting our economic growth? Now that we have a live case in Nigeria, clearly we've talked to you know, medical folks who shouldn't panic. Uh, we need to take some kind of measure so that it doesn't spread. So it will depend on the how we are able to manage it. If we don't manage it well and there's a lot of panic, business activities are going to shut down. Schools are going to close up. We've seen what is going on in South Korea, mm -hmm, Hong Kong, mm -hmm. and the others. But if you're able to contain it, then I don't see any reason why we will not be able to manage it and then move forward and try to meet up with those projections as long as we do the right things from economic policy implementation point of view. Would you suggest that this is a good time to shut down businesses? I, don't, I think it's too early. I mm -hmm. mean, I think really what we should be um, telling people is people not to panic, right? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, really, the fear can actually let an economy actually start going on the downside rather All than right. the actual um, 
issue. All right, regarding the, now taking a look at the economic drivers of this report, we have mining and querying, we have agriculture and uh, telecommunications. Well, mining and querying did grow significantly. However, agriculture, we saw it decline compared year on year compared to what we got in 2018. That includes also the telecommunication sector as well. Mm -hmm. So what would you make of this, ideally? So uh, as I said earlier on, um, there are some positives. You know, clearly uh, mining and query did pretty well, and that's a good thing. You know, if you're going around 6%, you know, um, compared to previous year, that's a good thing. But what we want is that we want those areas to grow whilst make, making sure that the key areas also grow. So for me, one of the biggest concerns is agriculture. The truth of the matter is even when we had a recession in 2016, agriculture was growing on an average of 4%. Prior to that, it was growing around um, 5% in 2014. So agriculture actually is our most robust and resilient sector. However, with, irrespective of the investments that um, our focus we've made in the agriculture sector, remember the agriculture sector has access to some anchor in, in window where they get loans at lower interest rates. Yes. So government is paying a lot of attention to agriculture sector. But it's not reflecting in the kind of in results. GDP because yes. as I t let me just make this clear, 2018 Q4 it was 2.46 percent. Yep. At 2019 Q4 it was 2.31 percent. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So your expectation is that if government is paying so much attention to it, then it should be growing. But we are aware that the number of um, you know concerns, you know, the insurgency in the northeast, you know, mm -hmm. is going to have an impact. We knew of you know the headsman issue, you know. So all these things should be looked at holistically and resolved by giving them access to better loans at lower interest rates without addressing other and um, some of these other issues, issues. you are not going to get a, um, mm. a res and the desired result. So our approach should be comprehensive in dealing with all the mitigating factors as well as giving them the necessary access to credit in order for them to actually grow the way we expect them to. Yeah, and moving on, we know that our demographic dividend should give us some kind of um, advantage. Mm -hmm. But then we see that uh, the level of investment, what level of investment should we be expecting to see the kind of growth that would move us, you know, significantly? So clearly, scale? clearly, if you look at Nigeria, Nigeria is um, strategic, strategically placed in Africa, right? Already the um, largest economy in Africa, the most populous nation in Africa. So with that, those are some, um, some of the natural you know, advantages that you do have. We're not landlocked. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So clearly, so, but then you need to then create an enabling environment for both foreign direct investors and domestic direct investors to partake and create you know, the opportunities in order for the economy to grow and create job opportunities for the teaming masses that are unemployed. We've already seen unemployment figures around 23%. If you then include underemployment, which is people taking up temporary jobs, that they are hoping that later on they move they to their a, kind better of, a better job, then those numbers will go way high, maybe mm -hmm. 40 or 50 percent. So really, um, we need to be very strategic in making sure we created an enabling environment. What I found very surprising was currently the um, foreign direct investment figures that came. Ghana, which happens to be a country that is much smaller than Nigeria, actually, Your country. Had, yeah, <laughs> actually had more foreign direct investment mm -hmm. than Nigeria. That, that tells you that investors are not seeing the kind of things that they want to see in this country for them to make those investments. So clearly we need to do more to create um, you know, um, those opportunities for foreign direct investment to come in and for domestic in investment to also thrive. One would be manufacturing is an example, right? You know, manufacturing sector is a very important sector because it creates a lot of jobs for all sets of skills, for both the you know, highly you know, educated and the uneducated. But it's a high volume, low margin you know, sector. So if you don't manage their cost, mm -hmm. then you know, most um, investors will not see it as a feasible sector to enter. So one, um, one of such solutions would be the power sector. For industrialization to strive, um, power is one major cost element. So dealing with that is going to be very important. It's the important. heart of the business. Exactly, the, the business heart of the is. business, mm -hmm. exactly. So some of these things have to be addressed for Nigeria to take advantage of its natural you know, comp competitive advantages. Now, you did mention the fact that looking at the foreign um, direct mm, investment, investment, we saw more going to Ghana than Nigeria. Yep. Does this mean that the results, when it comes to the ease of doing business, as reflected in the reports by the World Bank, is only reflective on you know, the paper and then not really on these businesses? So good. I, mean, I think it's a great initiative. Ease of doing business is one of the initiatives that you need to highly um, commend the government for. But it cannot be successful in isolation. You know, I always say that we, we, we do one or two good things, but if we don't do the other things, then you don't get the desired results because all these factors reinforce each other to get the desired results. So we all know we have infrastructure deficit. 
if I'm going to come into you know, manufacturing or agro allied um, manufacturing, which we want to do because we are talking about backward integration. You know, we don't want a situation whereby you import raw materials which put pressure on forex before you manufacture and sell out. So we want to do backward integration. But if you're going to do all that, you need to create an enabling environment such as infrastructure development. We have a huge infrastructure deficit and construction, if you look at the figures, wasn't great. That means we are not investing so much mm -hmm. in infrastructure development, which is a prerequisite for some of these sectors to actually thrive. So we're doing well in ease of doing business, but it has to be a comprehensive effort so that the key sectors, trade, manufacturing, agriculture, grow in addition to the other new sectors such as information and communication, which is doing great, you know, finance, which is doing great because of this new policy from Central Bank of Nigeria, query, mining and query, which is doing better now. You know, there's also real estate that has consistently been um, in decline that we mm -hmm. need to deal with. So we need to look at the, comp have a comprehensive picture and make sure holistic that all the, yeah, view. holistic mm -hmm. view, so that all these sectors are going to contribute positively. That's how we can go back to the years where 2014, where we're growing at an average of 6%. Thank you so much. Because of time, that's all we can have. But well, thank you so much, Dr. Joshua. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.